welcome to The End is Near. I'm your host, Dr. VP. Today, we want to discuss the movie, The Book of Clarence. It's a movie executive produced by Sean Carter, a.k.a. Jay-Z, a.k.a. Hove, a.k.a. the self-proclaimed guru of all things black. But at the premiere of this movie, I'll let you take a look at it. He says that this movie was fun and he saw it his duty to uh, put black people, we had already been in Westerns, and now it was time to put us in the black, uh, black people Cinema. in the New Testament. Take a look. And, you know, just come in with something that, you know, we, we've been to the West, you know, we, we, we haven't been to the West, but the movies have been to the West, and, uh, and uh, you know, also the New Testament. So it's just, it's just, it's just fun. As you can see, Jay-Z felt it was his duty to to put black people into the New Testament and write them into the New Testament because we have been in the wild, wild west and so forth and different things and, and cinematic features. So this movie that he chose to finance and get dis distribution for as a movie written and directed by a, man, a man, gentleman named uh, James Samuel, who is actually the brother of Seal, the recording artist. And in this movie, the main character, Clarence, who is played by Lakeith Stanfield, he plays a character that envies Jesus and comes up with all these schemes. And is, it's set in 33 A.D., uh, A.D., Omnio Domino, Year of Our Lord. And it's this time frame where this guy is selling weed and doing these things. And he's coming up with scams to say he can be like Jesus and he can make money doing miracles. But the underlying, uh, the underlying theme of the movie is to, to minimize Jesus and to make him and bring him down to our level to say you could be like him or he's nobody who's just a regular guy and it's just a story but it's not a story and and it's it's in its agenda jay-z who has the lyric lyrics the same jay-z has lyrics in empire state of mind that says that jesus can't save you and life begins when the church ends he also all throughout his career has claimed himself to be god you know, a God on earth. He calls himself Hove, which is short for Jehovah. And, and, and Jehovah is the Hebrew name of, of God. And, and Jay-Z throughout his career, he, many things in there's many occultic symbols. You see him do the pyramid symbol, the rock, the rock, uh, rock nation or Rockefeller symbol. He calls it, but it's really occultic. It's just a pyramid sign of Babylon, Babylonian culture. And they occult this, and there are many references in Beyonce's music. His wife and many people envy him because of his success in the earthly realm and because of his wealth. And they look to him for knowledge and guidance. There's a line in a song that he did called uh, God Did, which everybody else in the song, there's Lil Wayne on the song, Rick Ross and other, other people. And everybody else says God did, but when he gets to his verse, he says Hove did, because in his mind, Hove is God. And he declares himself to be, be God many times. And, and the reason why this is, Jay-Z is part of a, a, a sect of Islam, and it's not conspiracy theory. These are not, you know, wild out theories. He believes in 5% of theology, which is basically a sect of Islam. At the time when and me and Jay-Z are the same age, and I follow hip hop, since its inception, I saw it from the beginning. And at the time, hip hop in the beginning prior to NWA, there was no gangster rap. There was no player music out of Oakland. All the hip hop was coming out of New York, the Bronx, Brooklyn, Harlem. That's where hip hop came from and where music was coming from at this time. And there was a gentleman named Clarence the 13th, and he was a former head of security for the Nation of Islam. And uh, he broke away and formed his own set called the Five Percenter Nation. And this heavily influenced hip hop in the beginning in the formative stages. And Jay-Z is a product of that. You know, Jay-Z went to high school with uh, Buster Rhymes, who also embraces Five Percent teachings. I'll let him tell you a little bit about what the Supreme Mathematics are and what they actually believe. Check it out. Speaking of destiny, I heard you converted to Islam. I've been in Islam. Okay. I've been in Islam since I was 12, 13 years old. Because I was introduced to the 5% nation of Islam when I was 12 or 13 years old. That. You know what I'm saying? And it's been that ever since. So So for the people that don't know, what is the 
the five percent nation of Islam is it's a it's a it's a it's a division of the nation of Islam that was created by the father Clarence Thirteen X, who used to be a Muslim. He used to be a part of the nation of Islam. Muslim. He was a one of the head generals of the, the food of Islam, which is the Muslim security at the time. And this is back in like the 1930s and the 1933, 1935, 1934 time frame. And um, the father, Clarence 13X, um, you know, he was a brother that felt like it was important that the urban community was being communicated to as far as, you know, the science behind everything in life in the way that was prioritized just as much as it was for Muslims that, you know, were born into being Muslim or that had converted into the nation of Islam. Now the father Clarence 13X, he felt like, you know, a lot of these kids in the urban community, they ain't had a discipline or the mindset or the conditioning to want to convert. You know what I'm saying? So that still didn't mean that they didn't deserve the science. That still didn't mean that they didn't deserve the truth. That still didn't mean that they didn't deserve the information that could help empower them. So what he did was he went in the hood and he would see these kids on the corner gambling, rolling dice, selling drugs or whatever they was doing. And he went to them and partook. He, 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 he felt it was necessary to sacrifice himself in a way where even if he had to partake in the activities that was improper, to clean them up. If they smoked, he, was, he smoked with them. If they rolled dice, he rolled dice with them to make them feel comfortable enough to embrace him in their circle and be willing to listen to the information. You know what I'm saying? And that's what he did. And, um, you know, he, he, he created the 5% nation of Islam, which is breaking, broken down, and the 5% is the, the rich, poor, is the, is the poor righteous teachers of the planet. And 85% is the mystery God believers and the slaves to the mental death and power, and the ones easily led in the wrong direction and hard to be led in the right. And the 10% is the rich blood suckers of the poor. So those are like the ones that pretty much run things in government. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Um, so as you can see, Buster Rhymes, who also went to high school with Jay-Z, they, Biggie also went at the same time, same high school, all out the same area, Brooklyn. But that the 5% of teachers were very influential at this time period. Rakim, who's considered to be one of the greatest MCs and a, a mentor of Jay-Z and a heavy influence, Rakim also embraced 5% of teachings. He called himself the God MC, God on Earth. They believed these teachings. There were so many groups at that time, brand Nubian. And the list goes on and on. There was a group that I saw here in Los Angeles, one of the first hip hop shows that ever came to the West Coast. It was Poor Righteous Teachers, uh, Boogie Down Productions, and uh, D-Nice, they came. Poor Righteous Teachers had a hit record called uh, Rock This Funky Joint. And what the Poor Righteous Teachers talked about was uh, enlightening black people and, and, and teaching these 5 percenter teachings. And what the 5 percenters basically believe that 85 percent of the people, you and I, we're dumb. We're, we're derivatives of Christianity, which is a slave religion, and we don't have any knowledge. Our grandparents didn't have any knowledge, and we were taught this slave religion. That's the 85 percent. 10 percent are the blood suckers that what they would believe to be white people, they consider white people to be the devils. They also, as nation of Islam teaches that white people are the devil. That's what they, uh, Jewish people are the devil. That's any form of Islam going back to Abrahamic times. That's just what it is. And what they believe that 5% are left to teach the ignorant 85% what the 10% are doing. And that's what Jay-Z believes that he's doing with this movie. He's preaching his gospel. And the song God did, he says that this is Psalm 51 is he said, I, he quotes it and says, I'm the shepherd and it's my job to teach the young. And that's what he's doing. He believes that he is a poor righteous teacher and he's the self-appointed guru of all things black culture. And he, like I say, he repeatedly calls himself God and manifests, manifests himself to be God on earth. And this is what 5% of teach, teaches, it teaches that black man is the Asiatic black man that he created society and he is a God on earth. And if you think this is a conspiracy theory and you think it's far-fetched, I'll let Jay-Z tell you himself. Here you go. Now, you know, if you walk mm -hmm. around that chain all day, people are going to be asking you, what's the science? <laughs> what's today's mathematics? Yeah. All day this long. Is, by the way, this isn't even my chain. I stole it from somebody. Yeah, t I'll tell y'all who got off camera. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh -oh. Stealing chains now? Is uh -oh. it a world star? Not really stealing. Yeah, no. <laughs> Does it mean anything to you, though? Uh, Yeah, a little bit. 
<laughs> I'm with you. Yeah. I, don't like the, I don't like the conversation either. It's like, it's like, I call myself the God because I feel like it sometimes. That's, I just I, I study right. a little lessons, but I'm not yeah. into all you know. Yeah. I I, rich, religion is like a personal computer. You know, you you let people in if, <laughs> if you want to. Uh oh. <laughs> it is. It truly is. You, you know how people look at your computer. You're like, yo, this is a personal computer. That, <laughs> that's what everybody says. Oh, Jay Z with the new album. They're like, oh, Jay Z has such a god complex. I'm like, a man can't reference God. Like Genesis yeah. one twenty six says God created man in His image. So that's, I can't reference myself. Absolutely, a little bit every now and then is God. Absolutely, mm -hmm. we 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 are gods. Mm -hmm. Besides sports, what, what else? So as you can see, when Charlemagne, the God, who also obviously embraces five percent of teachings, and he says so such in the video that he believes that he's a God on Earth. Jay Z shies away from it. He doesn't really answer the question. He actually deflects and says, "You know, well, it's not really even my chain; it's somebody else's chain." And I'll tell you off air. But the other person that he's referencing, this is well documented on the internet, that the chain belongs to Carmelo Anthony, who also embraces five percent of theology and teachings. It's a five percenter, and all throughout, and, and Carmelo's been seen wearing the same chain. And of course, Jay Z represented him as an agent with Rockefeller Sports. But all throughout Carmelo Anthony's playing career with the Denver Nuggets, he wore number seven, Los Angeles Lakers number seven, New York Knicks number seven. Seven is God's number. He's letting you know that I'm a God on earth. And this is the teaching that Jay-Z embraces. He's been following it. He believes, like he said, that religion is a personal matter. And it should be like a personal computer. I'll let you in if I want to let you in. But He's preaching his message to the masses and he's telling you that your God and what you believe that you're in the 85% that you're foolish. But I stopped by to tell you that Jesus, he, he is Lord. The Bible says in uh, John 1 that in the beginning was the word, the word was God and the word was with God and the word became flesh and the word dwelt among men and the men received it not. And yes, the Bible does say that there are gods, and that would be little Jesus, but there's only one big God, L-O-G, Elohim, large G. Your God can be whatever you put before God, whatever idol you make. It could be your automobile, it could be your woman, it could be your money, it could be your house, it could be your job, it could be your family. But the Bible declares in Isaiah that put that I am the only true God and there are no other gods beside me. And then he says that I am also a jealous God. And he said, put no other God before me. So whatever your little gods are, and that's what Jay-Z is, or anybody believes that they are a God. And this, this is just original sin. Nothing has changed since the beginning of time. The Bible declares that there's nothing new under the sun. In the Garden of Eden, Satan told Eve that he doesn't want you to have knowledge because you would be like him. What? You would be your own God. You would become a God. And that's man's desire since the beginning of the time, the original sin, that we will be our own God. Because if, if I'm on my own God, there's no sin. There's no accountability. There's no rules. I'll do what I want to do because I'm God. And we see this also in modern society, the secret. All these things, uh, name it and claim it, uh, these self-proclamations and these daily things that you're doing, what you're saying is trying to speak things into existence. God spoke the universe into existence in, seven, in six days and rested on the seventh. So when you speak things, that, that these are what these theologies are telling that you are God. You can make things happen by what you speak, but only God can do that. It's called pantheism. Pantheism basically says that God is the sun and we are raised from the sun. We're extensions of God. So we're gods too because we're connected to the ray of light. But I stopped by to tell you that that's not true. We are fallen creatures without a redemptive savior. We are doomed for destruction. The Bible declares in Jeremiah the 17th chapter 9 verse, that the heart of man is utterly and deceitfully wicked above all things. It says, whom could know it? In other words, your own heart, you would do things that would shock yourself because at the heart of man, he's utterly and deceitfully wicked. That doesn't sound like a God to you or me. I don't know about you, but have you ever done any things in your life that you were surprised that you did. The reason why is because your heart can deceive you and lie to you. Whom can know it? You don't know your own heart. So we are not gods. We are made in the image of God, but sin separated us from God and broke that relationship. Jesus Christ said that I come to reconcile 
center to man to put back the relationship where God fellowship with man and walk with man and talk with Adam in the garden that was broken because of sin. And, and this movie just goes on to depict the story, everything that we've heard all through our lives there, excuse me, that Jesus is not real. He's just a man. But like I said, it's, it's set in a time period, 33 AD, Omnio Dominio, year of our Lord. Today is not 2,024 years from the existence of the earth. Today is 2,024 years from the existence of the birth of Christ, Omnio Dominio, year of our Lord. You, you constantly tell us that Jesus is not real and that he was a man, but he split time. No other man made that kind of impact on society with no internet, no news reporters, no TVs, no newspapers. But still later, we're making movies 2,024 years later to, to discredit his life and say he didn't exist. And I stop by to tell you that the reason that is because whenever something is authentic, it's always a counterfeit to, to authenticate the original. That's the reason why there's no uh, counterfeit $7 bills. There are only counterfeit $100 bills and counterfeit $20 bills because the counterfeit authenticates the original. And the reason why Christ is under attack and why Christianity has always been under attack is because it's the real thing. Amen. Till the next time, God bless you. Like, subscribe, share.